religion in itself. In what way? Well, it seems like there's kind of a Richard Dawkins cult, Richard Dawkinsism, like science really, nothing is certain in science. It works in statistics, you can't prove anything to 100%. So how can you make, how can you say that science is better than religion, then what you're trying to do is still well, calm people that bring order well, to you, the you, world? You can't prove anything to 100%. But 100% is a hell of a lot better than 0%, which is what you can prove by religious uh, um, re reasoning. <laughs> um, I guess you're giving up. I mean, I, I, I think it... Let, 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 let me try again on, on, on that. The, the idea that, that science is, is, is a religion, um, when in fact science is interested in evidence, and, will, and is prepared to change its mind if contrary evidence comes in. That's very, very different from a, re a religion. As Lawrence said earlier, in science we constantly open to the possibility of having to change our minds, and science proceeds by progressive refinement and changing minds. And there, there, there are things that I suppose will never be disproved, things like um, that the planets orbit the sun. That's never going to change. Um, I don't think that the fact of evolution is ever going to be disproved. It's, it's always going to, be, going to be true that we are cousins of chimpanzees and of monkeys and of kangaroos. Um, so there are certain things that we, that we definitely know to be true. The evidence is so overwhelming that to, in Stephen Gould's words, to object would be perverse. Um, but so-called religious truths have absolutely no evidence going for them whatsoever. If I challenged you as Richard Dawkins, you'd probably have a problem with that. Doesn't matter who I am. No. No, we're, we're listening to you now. Like, you know, you're you're challenging me now, and I'm, and, and I'm accepting the challenge. <laughs> and, well, and... Fair enough. Look, I'm a Catholic. I don't agree with what Josh Hell thinks, but I don't think he's a pedophile either. Like... No, I don't suppose he is. But, um... well, just, you know... I... I... I don't know. I've never asked them. My point is that you, as an eminent scientist, if I challenge your scientific doctrine, maybe your theories or your opinion, you'll, you'll disagree with me. Well, I, I, I will, I mean, when you say disagree, I, I will say, where is your evidence? Here's my counter evidence. And I'll ask let's, yours. Let's sit down together and look at the evidence. I mean, it, that's very different from saying that, that I'm arguing from authority. In fact, let me I jump in. Authority, that's the key point. Richard is not an authority. I'm not an authority. There are no scientific authorities. That's a key point. There are scientific experts. Richard knows a lot about zoology. I know a lot about physics. But there's no one whose views are not subject to question. And that's the key point. And there's no student that should ever be afraid of saying to a professor in a science class, you're wrong and here's why. Except and in I, Germany. Except, except <laughs> Anyway, maybe, maybe I think we... So I think why are you upset why I'm when I'm questioning you now? Like, you know, isn't that the same thing? You know, isn't it like you're, a prof you're one of my professors? Well, I, uh, no, what... Um, I, I think we're, we're trying to have a discussion, but maybe I think the point is uh, that maybe we should move on. I mean, well, you, you say you're a, a Roman Catholic and... I'm and also, I also study physics. Yes, but I mean, do, do you think the wafer turns into the body of Jesus? No. Good, I'm delighted then to hear Then you're not it. really wrong. <laughs> and, and, and the other thing that's important about science, and, and we had this discussion last night in the, in the Muslim I forum. mean, like, I might give an example. Like, you know, people didn't really buy the whole relativity thing when Albert Einstein first came up with it. You know, there were people, like, you know, it was when those former scientists started dying, that was when people started accepting relativity. But the difference is, you know, it's, it, that there's a fundamental difference, and, and you, you should really appreciate this, and I'm surprised in some sense that you don't yet, but I hope you will. Well, is that, listen, listen to me for a second, is that there's a difference between a story and something that makes predictions. And the only thing that really makes science really interesting is it works. And so last night, I, I, when, when, when I was debating with this Muslim, I, I challenged him when he said it's rational. I said, you're choking. I have two choices. I do the Heimlich maneuver or I pray for you. Which do you want me to do? And I think the real point of science is that it works. And if it didn't work, none of us would give a damn about it. Really. Yes, but the point is it works until someone comes up with a better theory. Right? What was that? 
No, it works. Would a you car agree? works. Yeah. An airplane works. The lights in this room work. Well, you know, you, classical my electromagnetism computer works. works until someone came up with a better theory. Yeah. So? That, that's, that, that's what happens. That's what makes... Anyway, I, I don't... Okay. Yeah, I okay. think we should move on. The <laughs> uh, common claim made by religious people is that you cannot disprove the existence of God. Uh, do you think science will ever advance to a point where it can disprove the existence of God? And if so, would religious people become atheists, or would they find something else to believe in? Actually, some, some religious people have, have, have been asked that, I mean, specifically with respect to Christianity. Um, there have been Christians who have been asked, what if archaeological evidence showed conclusively that Jesus never existed? And, and many of them said, no, I would, just, I would go on believing in him. Um, which is hard to credit. Uh, but... Hello. Um, I, this is going to be a bit of a change of subject, but I'm more interested to see what Richard himself and maybe even Lawrence, who's had a similar experience, thinks of people on the internet and even to a lesser extent in real life uh, misquoting or taking what you say at face value, almost raising what you say or who you are to a godlike status. I'm sure there are people here who have browsed websites such as Reddit, seen things on Facebook. Uh, 4chan of people who just kind of use you or people such as Carl Sagan as Neil deGrasse Tyson, people who say important things and who are smart obviously, but they just take what they say face value. How do you feel about that being used in like an atheistic uh, argument? You know, people it kind of almost reversing the tables, they're almost treating you guys on like a godlike status. It's kind of, I don't know, how, how would you feel about that? Or have you even observed that in the first place? I I don't think I have observed it, but if I did, I would be very disturbed. I would, I would be very um, upset if anybody treated me the way Roman Catholics are taught to treat the Pope. Which, I mean, I think it's a, it's a truly horrible idea. That you always make me kiss your ring every time I meet you. What are you <laughs> I think it's a, it's a truly horrible idea that, that anybody should uh, believe something simply because person X uh, believes it and tells them that, that that's what they've got to believe. It's one of the most disagreeable parts of the Roman Catholic Church that it, that it constantly um, argues from authority and passes the word down, especially when the word is frankly made up in the first place. 